Dr. Marissa Strident, a woman brimming with ambition and vitality, possessed an unwavering zest for life. Her profound love for her husband Robert was only rivaled by their shared passion for conquering the world's highest peaks. Little did they know that their audacious aspirations would lead them to the treacherous heart of Mount Everest's death zone, where tragedy would mercilessly strike. It was on that fateful day, May 20th, 2016, that Robert achieved the crowning glory of his climbing career, reaching the summit of the world's tallest peak. Yet amidst the grandeur of his triumph, an overwhelming sense of emptiness pervaded his soul, not because of the magnitude of the accomplishment itself, but because he stood atop the roof of the world in solitude. His beloved wife, Dr. Maria Striden, a resilient woman aged 34, had been unable to join him in conquering the summit. Exhausted and ravaged by the perils of high-altitude sickness, she'd remained just below Rob on the south summit, her strength completely depleted. Unbeknownst to them, the cataclysmic events that followed would reshape their lives forever. This is their story. Once again, we find ourselves drawn back to the awe-inspiring realm of Mount Everest, a mountain that has enraptured the attention of so many for so many hours. In this tale, we journey to the majestic peak in May of 2016, where Robert Gruppel and Maria Strydum embarked on their daring quest to scale the roof of the world together. Their shared aspiration had been years in the making, a goal fueled by their unwavering dedication and their unrelenting determination. Rob had been a climber since his earliest steps, conquering his first summit in the Cathedral Range at a tender age, forever setting his sights higher and higher. He reveled in the thrill of climbing, and it was during his studies in veterinary science at Queensland University that fate united him with Maria. Their connection was instantaneous, and Maria's own love for the outdoors blossomed alongside Rob's. Despite graduating with a degree in finance, she embraced her newfound passion, and the couple forged an unbreakable bond. Settling in Melbourne, Australia, Rob and Maria, now husband and wife, shared a grand vision to scale the loftiest heights of the world's most formidable mountain, with Mount Everest reigning supreme. Although both experienced climbers, they knew that scaling the Earth's tallest peak was an entirely different endeavour. While their families didn't oppose the challenge, they couldn't help but worry. Their love and support were unwavering, but tinged with some concern. There were moments when they questioned whether Rob and Maria fully comprehended the risks that they were undertaking. Weeks before their departure for the Everest Base Camp, the couple's preparations took an ominous turn. Sensing the gravity of their endeavour, they solemnly drafted their wills, serving as a stark reminder of the impending danger that they were about to walk onto. Maria's mother, her heart aching with apprehension, flew to Melbourne to bid her daughter farewell, a farewell that she felt compelled to witness firsthand. The moment of parting was poignant, with Maria's mother's voice quivering as she recounted those final days before their departure. The anguish of knowing that your loved ones are about to embark on a perilous, dangerous journey, driven by an unyielding inner voice in them, is an indescribable burden. As Rob and Maria's parents waved goodbye, they clung to the hope of welcoming their children back through the same door weeks later, as they always had. The year 2016 marked the first climbing season following the cataclysmic 7.8 magnitude earthquake that had ravaged Nepal and its neighbouring lands in 2015. Its devastating impact still lingered, visible in the scars that were etched across the surrounding landscape. Entire communities lay shattered, forever altered by the quake's relentless force. The base camp on Everest had not been spared either. The calamity claimed the lives of 22 and left thousands more entwined in the grip of sorrow a somber reminder of the mountain's unforgiving nature. When Rob and Maria arrived at the base camp after their arduous week-long trek, a bustling scene greeted their eyes. Rows of tents peppered the landscape, brimming with climbers feverishly preparing for the forthcoming season. Accompanied by three seasoned Sherpas, Rob and Maria wasted no time in commencing their acclimatisation process. Ascending to the higher camps, they meticulously adapted to the harsh mountain environment, preparing their bodies for the ultimate ascent. It was a process of carefully navigating the mountain's treacherous terrain, climbing higher and higher, and then descending to base camp to rest, refuel, and repeat. Week after week, they persisted, inching closer to their goal, awaiting the opportune moment to embark on their final summit push of Everest. Six weeks had elapsed since they'd set foot on Everest's slopes, 
Rob and Maria meticulously ascended and descended, their bodies adapting to the perilous altitudes. By mid-May, they felt ready and the fortune smiled upon them with flawless weather conditions. With resolute determination, they embarked on the climb, swiftly progressing through the initial stages. Camp 3, standing at an elevation of 7,162 metres, welcomed them without incident. It was here, just below the death zone, that the real ordeal began. In this harrowing realm, the air grew very thin, depriving the climbers of life-sustaining oxygen, and each breath became a Herculean struggle. The circumstances demanded utmost caution, for Everest's treacherous nature leaves little room for mercy. Rob and Maria were acutely aware of the time constraints imposed by the altitude. The plan was to leave Camp 3 at the stroke of midnight, commencing their arduous ascent towards Camp 4 in the early morning. It was here, beyond the ominous threshold of the death zone, that they'd make their final push for the summit. However, their preparations were agonizingly slow, consuming nearly two hours. Amidst the unyielding cold of the death zone, with temperatures plummeting below negative 30 degrees, they embarked on their treacherous climb. The feeble beams of their headlamps cast ethereal reflections on the snow and rock, the sole sources of light in the inky darkness. Satellites tracked their progress, a tenuous lifeline that was connecting them to their families who anxiously awaited news of their safety. It was shortly after 11am when they staggered into Camp 4, perched above 8,000 metres. Their schedule had fallen behind and the ticking clock only heightened the sense of urgency. Yet they resolved to rest briefly before commencing their final assault. At 7pm the stage was set for the last endeavour. Maria and Rob, accompanied by their three Sherpa companions, embraced the frigid night and embarked on the climactic push. The heavens unveiled a breathtaking panorama, the sky devoid of any clouds. The conditions were impeccable, offering a rare opportunity to conquer the summit. Their plan entailed reaching the pinnacle and returning to Camp 4 within a span of roughly 12 hours. However, a lingering dread permeated the air. Maria, in particular, had struggled with her waning strength. The South Summit greeted her weary form, and the relentless grip of altitude sickness tightened its hold on her. Undeterred by adversity, Rob, consumed by a feverish pursuit of making the summit, approached Maria with a proposition. Could he press onward while she remained at the South Summit, in the care of one of their Sherpas? In a heartbeat, Maria consented, selflessly relinquishing her dream to propel her husband towards his. Rob ascended and Maria descended. Altitude sickness struck them with oxygen running low. After enduring 14 gruelling hours in the death zone, Rob conquered the summit but felt so empty without Maria. It was on his urgent descent that hallucinations plagued him. Maria had descended ahead of him, pushing her weary body to the limit. Exhausted, she crumpled on treacherous slopes entangled in guidelines. Rob raced to be by her side. But fate had already taken her. In his embrace, she succumbed to the mountain's forces. Grieving, Rob continued to brave his descent, suffering frostbite. The team reached safety, but Maria's lifeless body remained on Everest for weeks. Her family eventually did bring her home and laid her to rest, her memory forever in their hearts. Rob survived the calamity physically, but the emotional scars ran so deep. The weight of guilt and inconsolable loss shadowed his existence, causing a somber pall over his soul. To this day, he still struggles to recount those harrowing final days on the mountain, forever haunted by what transpired. In researching this tale, the resonant words that Maria uttered should reverberate through all our thoughts. To fail is one thing. To quit is another, and I am no quitter. If you like this video, please give it a like, share it with your friends, and if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel. Make sure to hit the bell icon so that you will always get the very latest from us first.